So in video 1436, we made quite a powerful hand generator from an old shredder machine. And I was thinking, well, not a lot of people can get their hands on a shredder, and you need a certain type. Is, um, shredder machines, the new ones, have worm gears, and you can't turn those in reverse. It's the older ones where you can go forward or reverse. Works really well, so you don't often come across them. And loads of people make great comments about how, hey, you connect it to a bicycle, that sort of stuff. And I thought, well, yeah, okay, that's a really good idea. But one thing I come across all the time is disposed of exercise bikes. So I thought, what the hey, let's stick it on an exercise bike. I came across this exercise bike, and when it was in one piece, it looked like this. What I did was remove all the extraneous bits until we got to the mechanism. Which Here's where the pedal here. went, rotating that large pulley, and there's an idler there, tensioner, that rotates that smaller pulley, rotating this larger one, rotating the smaller one, that actually rotates the aluminium disc right here. So we've got a beautifully made pulley the system. The driving of it, obviously, would come off of this square shaft here. And I've kept one of the pedals, because I can take the pedal off and make Bangle that a grinder to it, chopped off all the extraneous stuff, and this is what I was left with. So this is the core of the machine. Now, I just think it's gorgeous, actually. It's got a real Victorian look about it to me. And of course, that immediately makes you think of something steampunk. What we need is a lump of really nice wood. So I got this butcher's block uh, from the local store. Chopped a couple of uprights out of uh, some timber I had lying around. And they'll be the uprights for it. And this thing is going to basically sit on those uprights. There it is, finished. To be honest, I think it's lovely. So if I turn this handle here, that there rotates at a red of knots. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there you go, it's right there, and that just goes mad, hey? It's got a flywheel on it, it's got a very fast rotation, and I can crank it by hand, and I think it looks like a central axle. Now the plan is that the belt will go there on the flywheel, it's a bit thin, so it's likely to slip off. Now, what I need to do is put a little ring in there, so that that makes a pulley and the belt won't fly off. And if you look, the belt is actually just long enough to go around there and round there really right, rather easily. So I need to take these bits off, which are circlips, and pull it off, and attach a ring onto that flywheel so that the belt can sit in that ring. That's it back together with one small exception. It now has a drive belt off this main flywheel here, so when I turn that handle slowly, that drive belt obviously turns like my pulley crazy. belt. There's my motor, which is going to be my generator, and clearly I have to join the two. And to do that, ta-da! This is a 90 degree angle attachment for a drill. It's just a drill chuck with 90 degrees and I've jammed a pulley on the side of it. There's a little clamp in there. That pulley goes onto the belt and then connects to the motor so that our gear set is now connected to our motor. I've already tried this of course and to be honest it is knock your socks off stuff. So there's the stepper motor. It's just an ordinary small stepper motor attached to that drill. It's all set up and that's got a pulley on it, obviously, and I just spin this handle and it will generate. Now, stepper motors generate AC, so you have to rectify if you want DC. And inside there, remember, there are two coils. So what I've done is I've wired those coils in series, so the voltages add up. So we've got something that's renowned for voltage, and we're adding those voltages. So I've got uh, a household fitting, actually, one of these. It's uh, a UK fitting, so it's meant to work on um, 230 volts. It'll work lower, but 230 volts is what it's meant to work at, and there it is right there. And we're going to see if we can light that household fitting by spinning our electric generator. And of course I've got this set up for pit, so let's do that. Here we go, ready to rock and roll. Let's spin it up. We're measuring volts at the moment. It's very much smaller, it has uh, less torque, so obviously it's not as hard to spin that thing, and we've got 133 volts out of it. Now let's have a look and see what amps we were getting. So I've connected it up for amps. Point 0.275 of an amp. 275 milliamps at 130 volts. So we basically got 30 watts out of that from that tiny stepper motor and an exercise bicycle that we chopped up via hand crank. Now obviously if we'd left both sides on we could just stick that on and leave the pedals on and it would be a 
bicycle instead of a hand crank and that is all you actually need to produce some serious energy if you get this right. Now it's the same format that they all are. We have some kind of input, in my case it's arm strength on this crank, but it could be leg strength on pedals, it could be a water wheel, whatever it is. Then we have a gearing system, and that gearing system is to our generator stroke motor. And that output, remember, is related to three things. Speed of rotation, number of turns of the coil passing through the moving magnetic field, and the strength of the magnetic field. One of the reasons these do so well is they've got neodymium magnets in. Anyway, I thought I would share that with you. It is something that is going to be a bit easier to make because you don't have to look out for a shredder. Uh, exercise bicycles are all over the place. A normal bicycle would do a really good job. But we can get some serious power, and I mean serious power, out of the tiniest of things. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.